ash dieback is a serious disease that is affecting our native ash in the UK. It's caused by a fungus that is native to parts of East Asia, including Japan and China. Ash dieback will not affect all the trees in the same location in the same way or at the same rate. So if we look behind us next to the birch tree are four ash trees in a row and they all look very different in the levels of symptoms. The one closest to the birch tree on the left looks pretty healthy. It may have one or two shoots that don't have any leaves on but by and large it looks pretty happy. Then the other three trees have got varying levels of dieback. You can see small shoots disappearing or missing foliage or the furthest on the right tree has got lots of dead branches and a very reduced crown and you can even see epicormic shoots. Those are the fine shoots the tree tries to send out from the main stem in an effort to survive. So it's really important when you're assessing the crown damage of any ash trees to also go and look at the base of the trees because there may be damage caused by honey fungus or the ash dieback fungus itself and you may have trees that look relatively healthy up in the crown but may have quite severe damage at the base. So it is important to go and look at the base of the tree as well as the crown because where honey fungus or the ash dieback fungus enters the tree so the honey fungus will come in the roots and uh, the ash dieback fungus at the point where the stem and the roots join then it will kill off that part of the tree. It's quite easy to do if you take off the, the, the moss with your, your boot and then if you go and just start scraping you can see how the, the bark has come away. If that was a healthy tree the bark wouldn't come away like that. So you can see that bit of the tree has been killed and in this instance you can see it's kind of soft and mushy and that's the dieback that's uh, caused by honey fungus. There are a variety of symptoms caused by the ash dieback fungus that you may see throughout the year. In the early summer the overwintering stalks of the ash leaves will produce tiny mushrooms and they'll release spores that will land on the current year's leaves. And you may see, if you look closely, speckling or browning and wilting of individual leaflets. And later on, the fungus grows into the leaf stalk or rachis. When the fungus that causes ash dieback continues in through those leaves that it is infected into the main part of an ash tree, then you may go and see typical discoloration. So you can see how it has gone a sort of brown color. And you may see a diamond shape forming as the fungus heads down, and sometimes as it heads both upwards if it has come through a side shoot. Or you may just see the entire part of that branch has been entirely killed. If you were to go and cut through one of these areas of dieback you see on any size part of the tree, you'll notice that the dieback causes discoloration going right into the wood, not just round the very edge and outermost parts of the tree. Because there are a number of factors that can affect how ash dieback will attack ash trees in the country, there's no one route I can suggest that you go and take when thinking about ash dieback management. One thing that's always worth considering is how severe ash dieback appears to be in the stand or trees you're looking at. And if the levels are low, that gives you potentially more time to think about introducing new trees and potentially taking out the worst trees. We would always advise where you've got some very healthy looking ash for you to retain them 
so that they can provide the future tolerant trees that we need to recover from ash dieback.